This is the Page Publishing Book Club. Good evening. Uh-oh. Pull out the holly. Pull out the holly, Rob. Is it too early? Too early for Christmas? I mean, we haven't even gotten through Thanksgiving yet. Ah, you know, we need a little Christmas now. It is Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, there it is. <laughs> We're so thankful that, that you're here with us tonight, aren't we, Rob? Ah, oh, I am absolutely right. We need a little Christmas now. We have some great authors with us tonight. That's our gift to you. People who have made a difference in their own lives, in the lives of others, and people who have even managed to change laws that are wrong. I mean, wrong, I tell you. So while you're still digesting whatever you've ingested these last couple of days from uh, food to in-laws to obnoxious children, sit back and relax and listen to what we have in store for you tonight. If you happen to be one of, I don't know how many people that are still battling for justice after Hurricane Sandy, Sandy, you gotta check this one out. This is the true story of one man's battle with the Texas Department of Insurance that's been going on for five years. David Day wrote Defying the Odds. And David, you say this is, this is all over wind and hail insurance? Yes, basically the the coast of Texas. You have the coastline that runs from the Mexico border to Louisiana. Right. That area is subject to a different program than any other place in the United States because it's in a high wind area. The Texas Department of Insurance has created its own uh, criteria, and they did so in violation of numerous laws that already govern engineers and already govern insurance. But no one really ever challenged it until until uh, my book came out. Now it's uh, essentially because of my book, they had to change the legislation. The people running the program just, I mean, they were bad, bad guys. They would go after you if you stood up to them. They would use uh, the equivalent of the State Office of Administrating here in court is the same thing as the Justice of the Peace. It's almost like traffic court, just a court that's not ever meant to be deciding major insurance claims and engineering um, malpractice claims. Well, and that's what they were doing. Exactly. What are you talking about specifically? We design homes and then we inspect them to make sure they comply with the building code for high wind areas. Okay. Texas Department of Insurance can come in at any time during construction or after construction and, and evaluate it. And if they say it's wrong and I say it's right, well, they'll take me to court and accuse me of uh, fraudulently signing an inspection document. What? It'd be like your local building department. You, you, you built your house and you did it correctly and you got signed off by the city. But then your insurance company comes in and says, no, it's not built correct at all. And then accuses you of forging and a signature? And then accuses me of fraud, yes. That's insane. Yes, it is insane. And that's exactly what the whole book's about. But your book was able to bring about change. Bring about change, yes. See, not only me, they did this to hundreds of engineers. Most of them just, you know, tucked their tail and, you know, left the program. But because I live in a coastal county, I have to work here. I can't just leave. I had to, uh, you know, I had to fight it all the way through the state court system and then, and then write the book to get, to get justice. Well, how much did this cost you? Over $100,000 in legal fees. And who paid for that? <laughs> that came out of my pocket. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. In other words, the state can use state uh, taxpayer money to go after an individual engineer, and we have to defend ourselves out of our own pocket. Oh, my God. I guess a lot of people have read your book. Just from the people who've called me, that there's been over 1,000 books ordered. You know, I live in a coastal community. Yeah, I got hit by Sandy not too long ago. Right, Jersey Shore. How does this book relate to other coastal areas? It's the same. It would, it would be the equivalent of you file your claim, get it, get it approved, and then and then they come in and say, no, you didn't know, you didn't follow the rules, so we're not going to pay the claim. In fact, I understand sixty minutes has already covered a lot of fraud up there in the insurance. Yes. Denying uh, claims up there. Yes, and people who are still waiting, still waiting three years after the storm to get this whole thing straightened out. And people right. who can't afford to fight and people who, you know, they don't have $100,000 to go well, fight. Well, all of them need to read my book because 
there you're taking on the federal government, and and it's already made it to 60 Minutes. I mean, where corruption exists, if you don't speak out, they're just going to they'll deny the claims, hoping you won't fight back and get it and get it settled. Right. And, and then and then uh, Texas went further and accused the engineer of saying there is damage or there is no damage of fraud. I got accused of knowingly, willingly, fraudulently signing an engineering document. Wow. And even after my own board, you know, you have like the the Texas Board of Professional Engineers, and every state has a board of professional engineers. New York, I'm sure, has a New York Board of Professional Engineering. Well, they they govern and, and license engineers, and and so that's who we answer to. But Texas the, and the Department of Insurance tried to supersede our own board, <laughs> and when our own board examined the same circumstances and said, I, I've done nothing wrong. They still they came after me in court and actually took me off the list of engineers appointed to do insurance work, which is private work. They they are controlling my ability to do private work. Wow. That's crazy. That's insane. It is crazy. It's insane, and it's also illegal and uh, a, 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 an abuse of the court system for sure. Yeah. Well, you must feel some sense of satisfaction now. Yes, I do. But, uh, you know, we passed the law effective September 1st, but they gave a year and a half to implement it. So, so for the next year and a half, I'm going to be dealing uh, with a system that's still uh, not allowing me to do my job. I'm hoping the book will. The Commissioner of Insurance in Texas can end it today. All he's got to do is say the law has been passed. We're no longer uh, uh, auditing engineers. Uh, it ends. Right. They can end it today, and I'm hoping the uh, pressure from the book will do that. I hope this book inspires people to write lawmakers and demand the law be implemented sooner than later. I mean, what I love about this book, David, is that you refuse to give up the fight. And as a result, you really are going to eventually make a difference, a big difference. All right, Sonia Saberwal has a life most of us can only dream of. I mean, who... Who can take a spiritual journey around the world? Well, that's what she did, and she shares her experience in her book entitled Alone, The Spiritual Awakening Within. Tell us more, Sonia. You know, it's about uh, 20 short stories, which are factual experiences from different people all around the world. They're all from different religions, uh, but of, of course this is not a religious text, but it is about uh, their life experiences, their sharing the pain, and... Um, through their pain, it's uh, revealed that, you know, everybody, there is always a meaning behind everybody's experiences, and everyone in this uh, world, uh, they emit a, r a ray of hope and uh, in this world of doom and gloom. And, it, uh, you know, there's a key within, uh, within all of us that unlocks our soul. Where did you find these stories? Uh, you know, I was on an expert assignment uh, to India, China, and I was traveling all over the world. And uh, during my spiritual journey, like I was on a spiritual journey and everybody that I met, like, you know, we were doing spiritual meditations and things together. And then through their, uh, you know, through all these uh, different kinds of um, uh, healing methods, I, I, you know, I found these people and they shared their pain with me. And then, then I took the permission and that inspired me to write the book. And that's how I, you know, I compiled all these stories together and um, I wrote the book. So you were you were on your own spiritual journey. That's right. Yeah. How were you able to do that? Well, I don't know. It was just I think it was uh, there was a spiritual connection with everyone, and I felt that uh, uh, you know when they had actually we all had a life changing experiences because when we were in our classes and we were traveling and you know I met so many people, I, I really found a meaning that you know they had a meaning in their life uh, and. Uh, there was a connection, a common connection, and which was the infinite source. What was your life-changing experience? Well, that's, that's, at, that's at the end of the book. I had, you know, since age 17, I had, like, you know, I had so many spiritual experiences. And the ones that I mentioned in the book, really, like, you know, it was, uh, they tr totally, totally transformed me. All right, so you don't want to reveal that. Uh, no, it's in the book, so I want people to know it. Like, you know, I want people to get the book and read that, you know, that there definitely there is an infinite spirit working with and within us. An infinite spirit that guides us? I would just say it's a, it's a higher vibration. That's what I would just say. Like, it's the invisible energy. And, um, you know, that, it, uh, you know, how it really works within all of us and connects us all. Does your book help us find that? Absolutely. 
And I'm talking about the experiences which are basically what has happened in the past, what is, ha what is happening now, and will also happen in the future. Uh, and these are very common experiences I'm talking about. Uh, you know, people had divorces, people had, you know, somebody got raped, somebody had, uh, somebody's son committed a suicide, and, you know, so forth. And every story that you're going to, that one is going to read, they're going to find, like, you know, um, uh, you know, what is the meaning behind the life experience. And they're going to find a way to move on and, and not just give up on life completely. Right. It's like you, know, you have to heal yourself within and you have to accept that, you know, everything is written for us. So it's like I'm just I just want to invoke a lot of questions. And like every story has a question at the end where I'm trying to ask the readers. It's all up to them whether, you know, do you think that the human life is uh, is uh, pre uh, pre like you know predetermined by somebody or is it like um, uh, are we all given a free choice to either accept the divine plan for our existence or to follow a life of continued ignorance and misery so i guess the question is is there a predestined plan for all of us that we just have to accept or do we have the power to shape our own destiny some uh, food for thought there sonia thank you thank you so much um I got to say real quick here, Sonia has to be on to something because she's now writing her second book after she had a very successful book launch. She sold 100 copies at this book of this book at her first book launch. So the spiritual awakening within. It's interesting that our next author, Ray Slaughter, wrote a book about the desire to find your spiritual path, too, and not having the ability to just take off and find yourself. It's called the Templar Chronicles One New Players. So tell us your story, Ray. Um, it's about a, um, a guy who wakes up. Um, he has no idea um, who he is, where he is, what uh, what's going on. Um, but he actually finds himself as a pivotal, uh, a pivotal character in the uh, post-apocalyptic civil war. All right. Someone said to me that they had to go and pretty much drop everything to go find themselves. Well, you really can't do that sometimes. And this is what, you know, the main character, his name is Paladin, he, he finds out that he, he has no idea who he is. He's trying to figure out who he is. He can't really go into that proverbial closet or sabbatical to go find out who he is. Um, everywhere he goes, it's, everyone's trying to fight him and beat him up and kill him. But during these encounters, he's learning that he has enormous strength, enormous ability, but he has no idea why. There's one other character that thinks he has an idea of who he is, so he's trying to train Paladin how to use his abilities. And then during this, right in the very beginning of the book, Paladin is kind of faced with a moral decision. Where he woke up, he was actually on the winning side of this civil war. And there was something that happened that didn't quite sit right with him, and so it kind of forced him into this moral decision of, hey, listen, do I stay on this side or do I try to find out the truth and then make a better decision? And this is where this is where this book goes. Now, it's called New Players. So that leads me to believe this is the first in a series. Yeah. Um, in this one, uh, there's actually the, the way it's going to turn out, it's going to turn out to be a trilogy. Like, have you written the other two yet? I've I've started writing the other two. <laughs> this is the way my mind works. I've I've already written the ending to the third, and I'm currently writing bits and pieces in the second. But yeah, in my mind, the books are there. Just getting them onto the paper and makes it sound to make it sound better. Your characters have a moral dilemma, right? Because it, there was a, a, a scene in there without giving away too much of the book where he begins to ask, you know, why are we having this war? And why is this side seemingly intent on not only dominating the other side, but eliminating their will? And, and that's, that's where he begins to think, hey, listen, what's going on? And, we're, and, and the king where, of his side, where he woke up, which was called the White Tower, the king says, well, listen, we got this under control. I just need you to do what I tell you to do. And this is where his moral dilemma kicks in. So what is it that you want the reader to take away from this? Uh, several things. A lot of your strengths will only be revealed in your adversity. There will be everywhere you go, you'll either have people that support you, people that are against you. Only um, way to really find out what you are capable of 
is by facing that adversity instead of running away from it. Um, if you face with a moral decision, make that decision and stick to it. And if you get into a position where you feel like you have to, quote, uh, find yourself, don't think about, you know, dropping everything and going off on this great sabbatical. Just find yourself where you are. You're, you're important to someone somewhere, so find yourself without having to leave these important people behind. Ray, I hear you. It's it's kind of tough when you have a family and people who love you and you tell them, I got to go. I got to drop everything. I got to go find myself. Um, an interesting contrast, though, don't you think, here from the interview right before that. Anyway, we have got to take a quick break. But coming up, you're going to hear from a woman who has published two, count them, two books with Paige. And they teach kids about history in a really fun and amusing way. You're going to love it. So come right back. This is the Paige Publishing Book Club. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then now's the time to call Page Publishing at 800-204-6099 and do it immediately. You see, they're looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review most of the books submitted to them. And they'll even give you their feedback. And if they like what they read, Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, and other outlets. They'll handle everything. Copyright protection printing, cover art, publicity, and editing. So if you've written a novel, a children's book, a cookbook, inspirational work, a book of poetry or biography, and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 800-204-6099 now for your free author submission kit. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. For your free author submission kit, call Page Publishing at 800-204-6099. Welcome back to the Page Publishing Book Club. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and my best friend, my best engineering friend in the whole world, Rob the Engineer. Smiling from ear to ear over there because he's having so much fun. Mary Therese Grabowski has written two books with Page. They are part of the Spirit of America series. And her first book was called Liberty on the Loose in the White House. And now she's completed her second book. It's called America by George. Now, Mary Therese is a seasoned reporter. She knows how to tell a story. And she does it in a way kids can learn and have a really good time learning about our nation's history. Welcome back, Mary Therese. You're on a roll. I just talked to you in what, May? So it seems it seems like every six months we'll have one coming out. We have 25 in the series. 25. That's a lot of writing. I know, isn't it? It was uh, just by, by circumstance that the whole series kind of happened. I, I, I mentioned before about my niece who I asked you. You know, makes the president's who makes up the president's cabinet. She said, "Why do I care who makes his furniture?" Right. Um, that was <laughs> that's kind of how this whole thing started. So, how's it going? Are you getting feedback? Oh, absolutely. Elementary school kids, specifically third through fifth grade, but truly anyone in, in elementary school will gain something from the first two books that we have out because if the words are a little too advanced for them. For example, kindergarten and first grader probably not going to understand the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, but the artwork, I think, is equally as important as the text. And though they're going to morph themselves into this as they become older, but again, this is a movement for us that that this becomes uh, part of the the elementary school uh, everyday curriculum. Learn this information early so that when you get to that 10th grade physics class, then you're, you're ready for even bigger and better things. You're getting your series into elementary schools? We're trying to do that as we speak. Right now, we're kind of on a book tour. Uh, Barnes & Noble have been very good to us. We were just in Dallas, Texas, Make Georgia, and and the response has been great simply because, you know, they're they're small, uh, short stories, and it's, you know, we've basically taken a big, fat history textbook and broken it down into little patriotic adventures. And we're, we're, we're taking historic facts and, and making them patriotic adventures with uh, America Johnson, who is our, our lead character. And we also, when we have book signings or we have readings, we play patriotic trivia with the kids for prizes. You know, the kids kids are all about the prize. So <laughs> we have nice little trinkets for kids. And at the end of every book, we have a quiz. So the, the kids, no kidding. We'll get the book, go over into the corner, read it, come back, and they're like, ask me a question, ask me a question. It's it's very 
enlightening and heartwarming to see that, that kids are getting interested in, in our history and in civics and in government. Our third book, which should be coming out in the spring, by the way, just a little spoiler alert, is uh, called Your Vote Counts. And our little character, America Johnson, runs for student council, but her father compares it to the presidential election. So that's very apropos for next year, and kids will hopefully have this opportunity to understand the election process and why it's important to vote. But to the current book, America by George, she, she actually dresses up as George Washington when she gives her reporting class, and she wraps the life of George Washington. And it's, it's, it's humorous, it's memorable. And if you remember Schoolhouse Rock back in the you know, late 70s, early 80s, yes. because you found yourself humming a tune to remember things like I'm Just a Bill or Conjunction Junction, What's That Function? This is kind of a modern-day version of that. Did you write the rap? I did. Oh. <laughs> I absolutely did. Can you give me a, a little taste? Sure, absolutely. And I'll ask kids, give me a beat, you know, and they'll <laughs> start up with their little... <laughs> And it just starts off, my name is George, the first president. A really big job and very important. <laughs> you have to really see her with the false teeth and the wig and, and the outfit. And by the end of her, her life with George Washington, the entire class is, is clapping along with the beat and they're remembering points about him. So it wasn't just your typical class report. And she, uh, she gets a really good grade, too, by the way. Of course she does, Dad. Of course she does. <laughs> you know, I, I just think that your story is such a great example of what can happen with page publishing. You have a real passion for what you're doing. You're writing about, you know, something you feel passionate about and you know a lot about, and you're you're putting it out there. And I just, I think sometimes people think, oh, you know, I want to do it, but, uh, you know, what's going to happen? What could possibly happen? You're an example of what could happen. I feel like the little engine that could, and, and we're about to release our third book with Paige, and we're very excited because if anybody's interested in, in you know, writing a book about anything, it, it's, it starts out as a labor of love, and it can be really difficult, and trust me, my illustrator and I spent years shopping this around to folks, and, you know, if you can score with a big name publisher and have somebody write you a check for an advance then rock on with your bad self, that's great. But that's really, really slim. When you come to an organization like Paige who works with you and helps you, you know, not only with your craft, but getting it out there and the and the publicity and it's it it truly makes you realize that it can be done. And and you, you can't just do it, you know, ten percent here, twenty percent there. If you want 100%, you give 100%. We feel like we're getting that with Paige as well. We, we just knew we, we had this great idea, and it wasn't doing any good if we couldn't get it out there. And Paige was able to help us do that. Nuff said, Paige Publishing Book Club fans. Nuff said. Okay, one more, Rob. We have time for one more? Okay. We are going to wind up tonight with a sci-fi story about second chances. It's written by Nathaniel Butzer. It's called Shotgunning of Dragon's Wrath and Keeper. Shotgunning. Is, is that a word? Um, well, I kind of looked it up uh, when I was looking for titles of the book, and I just, so, for some reason, I thought of the word like shotgun and looked up shotgun and didn't really find it anywhere at the time. So the name just kind of stuck. And it's about this world named Shotgun and that is at end of its time, and there's these two orphans, uh, Lily and Christopher, that have a chance to go back in time and to change the outcome of the world so it doesn't end. Don't you wish we really had the ability to do that? It would be nice if we go back and change things, you know, making things better. <laughs> and I've been having this idea, you know, in my head for a while now, and um, that kind of just inspired me to decide, you know, why don't I try to see if I can put my thoughts down on paper and see where it leads. Um, Lily and Christopher are both orphans, and they kind of feel like they, you know, even though they're still young in age, they feel like they're kind of unwanted, and that uh, they really haven't even given a first chance. But this, you know, they find out that they have extraordinary powers that they can go ahead and not only change their own um, future, but also change, you know, change the future of an entire world. That they've got the ability to have a second chance. It's actually a series. I've been thinking about the whole premise for about six years. Um, the last couple of years, I've actually been writing it, but it's probably going to be five or six books in the series. I'm working on the second book already, and that one's called uh, Shotgun and uh, Trinity and Keep. And how are you telling people about your books? I basically, so far, I've just done a lot of stuff as far as Facebook, friends, and family. I initially 
I think the book was published the end of March, beginning of April. And outside of my initial group, as far as reading and editing it, I wanted other family and friends to have a chance to read the book to um, go ahead and do whatever editing they could so I could get the second revision out because I really kind of believe in the thought process. You only get, you know, you know, one chance to make a first impression. So I wanted to, you know, have all my friends and family edit the book, find the mistakes that they think are in it, you know, you know, send me emails. And uh, then I was going to, once I got the second revision done, which is almost done now, um, I was going to go out and I was going to start, you know, meeting with Barnes and Nobles and um, different locations, libraries, as far as trying to um, do some publicity. And also I've got my own Facebook page and um, through page publishing, uh, they've also my book up there. So what do you do in real life? I'm a ceramic engineer. Um, I go ahead and I basically work at, at a brick plant running their, their kiln there. And I've been doing that for about 13 years. And um, just now I'm going back to school right now for uh, Six Sigma and Lean. Uh, I'm trying to get my black belt in both of those so I can uh, maybe kind of broaden uh, my my career, so to speak. All right, Nathaniel. You know, always a good idea to let people read your book and get some feedback. And that way, you know, you can make changes if you need to before you send it off to the publisher. Okay, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. Yes, Rob is Rob is shaking. Yes, some ideas and thoughts and journeys to digest on this Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you're spending it with your family and, and loved ones who aren't necessarily your family and not spending too much time shopping. And thank you most of all for spending time with us. We are very, very thankful, aren't we, Rob? Oh, yeah. So thankful that you stopped by to drink it all in. All of these authors who believed enough in, in what they were thinking about to write about it and through Page were able to get it out there for all the world to read. You can do it, too. Yes, you can. And if you need a little more prodding, um, why don't you come back next week right here on 710 WOR. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-204-6099 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-204-6099 for your free